ಅಸೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾತೀರ್ಘಮಯ ಮಿತ್ರೋಣ್ಮಾ ಅಮೃತ ಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light lead us from death to immortality om peace 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 good morning <clears throat> so after quite some time we are into bhagavad gita again so we have been trying to uh, see bhagavad gita trying to understand bhagavad gita from a deeper perspective and trying to read in between the lines and trying to see that what wisdom bhagavad gita can offer to us which we can apply to our day to day lives and how we can connect those profound ideas with our own life so we were into the chapter third the chapter named karma yoga where shri krishna speaks elaborately about karma yoga how to do work properly so that it contributes to our spiritual growth and let me recap for a while because probably we are uh taking this subject after about more than 2 months so briefly recap me what how far we have we are in the third chapter so we saw that in the beginning of the third chapter arjuna had a doubt that <clears throat> whether the path of knowledge is superior or the path of karma path of action is superior because sri krishna extolled praise the path of knowledge kana yoga in the second chapter but in between he also said do your duty arjuna so arjuna was a bit confused that among these two paths which is greater which is better tell me the one which is surely the better so that i can take that one don't confuse me that was arjuna's question so sri krishna said that there are two lifestyles one is activity oriented another is contemplation oriented but in both these lifestyles karma or action is unavoidable so none can avoid karma so since none can avoid karma why don't you do this karma in a way which contributes to your spiritual growth so arjuna you require karma yoga and for that you have to do your duty which is now fighting in the battlefield and sri krishna also gave three arguments in favor of karma yoga he said na karma nam ararambhat naishkarmam purusho snute ಸಿಂಗ್ ನಿ ಕಚಿತ್ ಶನಮಿ ಜಾತು ತಿಷ್ಠತ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮ ಕ್ರೀತ್ ಕಾರ್ಯತೆ ಯವಶ ಕರ್ಮ ಸರ್ವ ಪ್ರಕೃತ ಜೈರ್ ಗುಣೈ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ನೋ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎವರ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಈವೆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಮೋಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಗುಣಸ್ ಹ್ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗುಣಸ್ ಹ್ವಿಚ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಹ್ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನೇಚರ್ they always keep on working so 
by the force of the gunas, by the force of nature, we are always made to work. Then he said, Karmendriyani sayyamaya ya aste manasas maran Indriyarthad bimuratma mithachara sa uchyate But one who has withdrawn from action at the same time keeps on mentally recollecting the objects of the senses that one of deluded mind is a hypocrite. One may renounce the action as such, but unless one has reached that kind of mental state where one can do away with work, the mind keeps brooding over the senses, sense objects and the activities. So, although physically one may withdraw from action, one will mentally keep on thinking about that. I told you a story about a temple manager, right? How, how difficultly he found that to sit alone and doing nothing. How, how he found it is difficult. Do you remember the story? <laughs> or like to hear again? <laughs> okay. okay, I see a few new faces. Interesting. So in, a, in southern India, there are big temple complexes. So in one of the temple complexes, there was a kind of beggar beggar or you may say a wandering monk who used to do nothing. He used to just sit in front of the temple. And from the temple, you know, big temple complexes, the foods that were offered to the deity was quite, quite a, uh, a lot. A lot of foods were offered and when they came as prasad, it was distributed among the uh, priests, people working in the temple complexes, and this person always used to get a share. So there was a change of temple manager. A new manager came, and he wanted to know that how things are managed here, and he asked about what happens to the prasad that comes back from the DTF after it has been offered. Then they said it goes like that, and that person also gets a share. And he asked, why that person? He does do nothing. He, he does not do anything. Why should he get prasad? So he went to that person and said, you get a share of prasad, but you do nothing. I think you should not get any prasad. Then that person said, okay, you do one thing. You also try to sit one day like me without doing anything. If you can't do that, I shall not take prasad. So manager said, yeah, it's a very easy thing, doing nothing, just sitting. But the manager, after a few hours, next day found how difficult it is to sit quietly without doing anything. Then he came back and said, his share should be doubled. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that is what Sri Krishna is saying here, that how difficult it is uh, to just keeping away from work, one cannot. Then he said that better than this, better than this hypocrisy is to do work. He said, Yastu indriyani manasa niyam myaravate arjuna karmendriyai karma yogam asakta sa pishishvate. So doing action with a regulated life and without being attached being hooked to the results is much better. Such a yoga is excellent, and karma yoga is suitable for the majority. And in the, then he said, try to do, try to the, do the obligatory duties, the duties that have been prescribed in the scriptures. Niyatam kuru karmatvam karma jayohi akarmanaha. Sharira yatra pichate na prasidhed akarmanaha. So you should perform your obligatory duties because action is superior to inaction. He say akarma karma jayo because um, in, in, in inaction the mind is idle and idle mind is table's workshop. 
So better than that, do karma, but do in a proper attitude, with a proper way. And niyatam kuru karmatam, that we saw in the last talk, that this niyatam kuru uh, karma, this niyatam means obligatory duties, which are the niyatam karma, we said, the five yagya, five pancha maha yagya. And we quoted uh, taitriya aranyaka, which says, Panchavayete Mahayagya Satati Shantushtante Teva Yagya Pitri Yagya Bhuta Yagya Manusha Yagya Brahma Yagya Iti So one should daily do five types of sacrifices. So these five types of sacrifices were Deva Yagya, worshipping the God. That means doing some spiritual practices daily, some kind of religious practices daily. Then, Brahma Yagya, worshipping, expressing our gratitude to the sages, the seers, who, for our own benefit, recorded their experiences in the holy books, holy scripture. So, one should try to read every day some holy book, some part of scripture. It is a kind of expression of our gratitude to the seers, the sages, the prophets who recorded their experiences for our own benefit. So yesterday I was uh, studying Patanjali Yoga Sutra. He, there, um, in Patanjali Yoga Sutra there is a term called Sadhaya. It is part of Niyama. Yama Niyama. Sadhaya has got two connotations. Uh, one is reading or studying, deeply studying. Another is repeating the mantra, doing japa, repeating the mantra. So there it is interesting, Patanjali says, Sadhayat Ishta Devata Samprayogoho. From study or from repeating the mantra, one sees or one experiences one's chosen ideal. Ishta Devata means the, your favorite deity, the deity you have chosen as your ideal, as your goal, whom you want to experience, whom you want to see. So it is, the question comes, how? We can understand probably that from repeating the mantra intently, I mean, with all seriousness, one can have the vision of the Ishta Devata. But how? Sadhaya. How self-study can even lead to that? So one of the commentators, Bachaspati Mishra, he says that Sadhaya in this context means not only study, studying those books which are related to the life and teachings of my own chosen ideal. So if we keep on reading, if we keep on thinking, if we keep those thoughts in our mind when we are reading those kind of books, when we are studying that kind of scriptures, definitely they have deep impressions on our mind, which helps to have vision of the Ishta Devata. How they are deeply uh, connected. So that also is prescribed in Vedas, that's Brahma Yagya, kind of offering our gratitude to the seers and sages by way of cultivating the practice of studying scripture daily. Then there was Manusha Yagya, helping other human beings in whatever capacity. And probably in today's context, the best way to help other human beings is through giving our time. <laughs> Not by anything, by giving our time is probably the best we can do for others. Then there was Bhuta Yagya. Bhuta Yagya means taking care of the animals, the plants, other living beings. So these are the five Pancha Mahayagya, five daily sacrifices one should do. So. That is what Sri Krishna is telling, niyatam kuru karmattam. These are the kind of activities, actions that you should do 
daily. And you know what? Another interpretation of why the gods and goddesses in India we always see with a vehicle, which has always is an animal, right? Like Durga has a god, tiger as is as her vehicle. Like that, every deity has got some vehicle. So one of the interpretation is that that to have reverence of respect for those animals. It's part of, it is part of the Bhuta Yagya, taking care of the animals. So they are sacred kind of thing. So if such a, pers a person does this lead a life where he uh, or she performs this type, uh, these five kinds of uh, activities daily, so he or she contributes to the society more than what he or she is taking from. So he, such a person is not a burden to the society, it's a blessing to the society. So, niyatam kuru karma. These are the obligatory duties. So, it was the Vedic life. It eroded, of course, we, in, even in India, uh, probably a handful of people do this kind of practices or even aware of that, but that was the Vedic way of life, that a life of sacrifice, a life of gratitude towards the gods, to the seers, to other human beings, to animals and plants. So, niyatam kuru karma. So, niyatam means a kind of commandments of the god. Commandments. So, when there is a commandment, there is a, an element of fear in it commandments you have to do. It's an element of fear. But this does not work. This does not work well. So creating or making to do worship God and other beings through a kind of fear does not work. So if we say that niyatam means ishara agya, means commandments of God, Sri Krishna will be now speaking about Ishara Yagya. Yagya means, Yagya is a loaded word. It has got many meanings. Here Yagya means as a worship of the Lord. So from Agya to Yagya. Okay, Agya means commandments and Yagya means in the spirit of sacrifice, a spirit of worship you do. That is what he is going to say in the next verse, verse number 9 of chapter 3. So he says, Yagyarthat karmana natro loka yam karma bandhanaha tadartham karma konteyo mukta sanga samachara In this world, people are fettered by actions unless it is performed in a spirit of sacrifice. Therefore, O Arjuna, let thy acts be done without attachment as sacrifice only, as a spirit of sacrifice. So, here Karma Yoga is presented as a worship of the Lord, as expression of gratitude towards God and not out of fear. So, whatever we need, the Lord has provided us. And therefore, why can't we worship the Lord with the gifts we have received from God? This is the spirit of karma yoga, yagyartham karma. Do your work as a spirit of worship to the Lord. Let us convert our very life into worship. Let us convert our everything, whatever we do, as puja, the spirit of puja. Some of you, uh, some of you may be aware of a profound and very beautiful hymn called Shiva Manasa Puja, the mental worship of Shiva, very famous. There, in the fourth paragraph, the fourth paragraph is uh, exactly what it is. Uh, I was going to uh, convey that convert every action into a worship. 
it is it, it is said in Shiva Manasa Puja. Atmatam Girija Mati Sahachara Prana Shari Ram Griham Puja Te Bishayo Pobhogorachana Nidra Samadhi Stiti Sanchara Padayo Pradakshana Vidhi Strotrani Sarvagiro Yat yat karmo karo mitat tatakhilam Shambho tava radhanam Yat yat karmo karo mitat tatakhilam Shambho tava radhanam So, it says, O oh Lord, means addressing Shiva, you are my own self, Atma. And Girija, Girija means Parvati or Durga, she is called Girija because it is uh, the legend goes like that she is the daughter of Himalaya, Giri, Girija. So daughter of Himalaya, Girija, she is my intellect. So the most important two things, my own Atma and my intellect. So my own Atma are you, and your consort, Girija, is my intellect. Okay. And my vital forces are your attendants. Those who are around you, they are my vital forces. And my body is your abode. So my body is a temple where Lord resides. And when I go to sleep, it is like samadhi. Because I am merged into you. And when I, whenever I am walking, it is like I am circumambulating you. And whatever I am speaking, whatever I am uttering is hymns for you. And whatever action I perform, O oh Lord Shambhu, Shiva, it is all your worship. We get a similar song in uh, Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna dedicated to Mother, Divine Mother. That it's the same spirit that when I am eating as if I am offering food to Divine Mother. So it is just changing our attitude, converting our attitude, converting our every action, trying to convert our every action as worship. The Manasa Puja, mental worship. So, O Lord, let my very living become an offering to you. That is Yajna. Because the world is Vedant. Those who are students of Vedanta, they know that the same Brahman, the same Satchidananda, same ultimate reality, when is associated with the waking world in the individual level, we call it Vishwa. And in the cosmic level, we call that same Satchidananda as Virat, the vast. Okay, so let everything be worship of the visible world, which is nothing other than God. If you if you remember in Sri Ramakrishna's life, Sri Ramakrishna one day in the morning, early morning, went out to collect flowers. Went out to collect flowers to offer to use those flowers during the worship of Divine Mother Kali. But he went out and he saw those flowers are all in bloom in the tree, in the flower trees, and he had the experience that worship of the Bidat has been already done. He could not pluck the flower. He said, Bidat er puja hoye means the worship of the Bidat the Lord, the God itself, which is appearing in this universe as this visible world, has already, already been performed. The trees have offered their flowers to the cosmic self, the Birat. So that day he could not pluck flower anymore. So this is the spirit that 
do whatever we do in the spirit of yagga in a spirit of sacrifice to the lord the visible world the lord as visible world so here karma yoga is being presented as, as yagya sacrifice yagya as i said is a very loaded term it has got many meanings worship sacrifice ritual and it evolved through the ages in the vedas vedas are full of yagyas how to do yagyas there we see that there is also a transition in the concept of yagya as we understand by yagya means physically performing something some fire ceremony and offering something with the spirit that i am not only taking but i am also giving it's my duty to give back and later period as i as we know the entire veda can be topically divided into three parts the karma kanda gyana kanda and bridging them is the upasana so karma kanda speaks about these rituals how to do that how to perform that types of rituals and every detail about that gyana kanda is the upanishads where one goes into philosophical inquiry into the nature of one's own self nature of the universe the metaphysical questions gyana kanda put advaita vedanta uh, deals with and bridging them is the upasanas upasanas is a transition so here in the upasanas we see that vedas speak to us not to perform those ritual sacrifices physically but think mentally about them take one of the sacrifices and convert into a cosmic contemplation for example ashwamedha yagya was a kind of sacrifice where horses were offered for the for by a king and we see at many places vyadharana upanishad chanda upanishad these are called vidyas a particular type of contemplation or meditation where one thinks about the entire universe as a horse the sun as the face of the horse like that and the idea is to give the idea is to that convert your whole life into a sacrifice a sacrifice is going on all through the creation participate in that and in that way you expand yourself our own conception about our self is this body and mind and the body mind complex and all these upasanas all these spiritual practices if we look at them in deeper level they are all meant to break that habit and expand ourselves the concept of yagya concept of sacrifice taking part in the the cosmic sacrifice that is going on is the way of expanding ourselves that is what sri krishna is speaking here about and there is an advantage in that he says annatru ayam loka karma bandhana if we don't do our work in the spirit of service in the spirit of sacrifice we will be fettered we will have bondage why because we i i shall be in tension because i have my own selfish motives whether i will be able to do that whether i will be successful whether this will work for me or not but when i am doing everything i am trying to do in the spirit of sacrifice i shall not be too much bothered about the outcome which is the goal of karma yoga not being attached or hooked so much intent about the outcome rather be a participate in the work itself and do at your best in the spirit of sacrifice as a spirit of offering so we can see from these things that vedic life was a life of intent environmental awareness we see in the hymns of the vedas that they are full of praise and appreciation of the elements of nature the five elements of nature and those all the five elements 
are gift from the Lord, from a devotee's perspective. Now, no, we, we did not create any of them. They were given to us. So what Sri Krishna is telling here is that you don't create, you cannot create five elements. You also cannot purify them. At least don't pollute them. Don't abuse them. And any life which violates this beautiful harmony and rhythm is a bondage to entire humanity. Therefore, Sri Krishna says, Yagartham karma. So, take part in this cosmic cycle, take care of the five elements, take care of nature, that itself is a sacrifice, that itself is a worship. This is another way of looking at karma yoga from the perspective of devotion. So we may say that action plus devotion is yajna, action minus devotion is karma. Yajna liberates, karma binds. Yajgarthat karma no annatrayam bandha. So there is a uh, uh, verse in Mahavarata 2, Shanti Parva, it says, karma na baddhate jantuhu vidyayacha vimuchyate. So ordinary action, uh, by ordinary action, people are caught into bondage. But by done with correct attitude, it liberates. So this is the attitude that you take part in the life process itself and do whatever do in the spirit of sacrifice, the spirit of worship of the Lord. And so here the idea is to that it is your duty, it is your duty to take care of the entire cycle, entire interconnectedness of life. It is a life of sacrifice. You cannot just keep on taking, you have to give back to nature, to the world, since you are also taking. So one of the teachers, uh, he said, a society where, which is based on duty, the outcome is humility. Society based on duty, the outcome is humility. A society based on right, outcome is fight. <laughs> so here it is being said that it is your duty to give back. It is your duty to give back, to participate in the cosmic cycle that is going on. Then he says, in the next verse, Sahayagya praja srishta puro bacha prajapati aneno prasavishadham esho bastishto kamadhuk. Having created human beings along with the concept of yagya, in the beginning of creation, the creator said, May you prosper by this. May this yajna be source of all desired objects of you. So such a life of sacrifice is prescribed by Vedas themselves for the harmony and progress of the society. So it says that at the beginning of the creation, the creator gave us like a manual. So any product we purchase, there comes a manual. Why it comes? Because the producer only knows how to best handle that product. And it is for the benefit of whom? Benefit for our own sake, who is using. So in the beginning also, creator created this creation and gave us a manual how to handle this nature. And Otherwise, if we don't know, we shall be the cause of our own destruction. And that is what we are seeing around. So global warming, right? It's a phenomenon now. The last issue of Time published the issue about global warming, how Pacific islands are sinking, how one of the Pacific islands in Fiji has disappeared, sunk. And that made all the 
Pacific Islands to come together and force the Paris climate change to change the standard of global uh, the rise of temperature to 1.5. Earlier, the target was 2. But these Pacific Islands came together and did a very good job and influenced all the developing nations and UN to keep the standard at 1.5. So it is a phenomenon now that temperature is rising, ice is melting, erratic pattern of rain and drought, species or many species are moving towards north, many species, species are vanishing. So that is what happens when we don't know how to deal with what God has given to us. So whatever we need has been supplied, provided by God. Whatever we need, our greed has only abused them. That is why in the beginning, Lord created this creation and gave us the human beings manual. It's a question why Lord gave the manual to human beings. Guess what? Because we only can abuse that. Other animals, plants don't abuse this cycle, this rhythm, harmony. We have free will which can be blessing and which can be a disaster. So, for to us, God gave us the manual and the manual was live in the spirit of yajna. Yajna means spirit, live in the spirit of taking care of the elements of nature, the forces of nature. So, and then he uh, says, Aneno tasa vishadham. By the life of Karma Yoga, by doing action in the spirit of yajna, which is given out in the Vedic manual, may you prosper. So you will prosper if you follow the laws of the nature. By that, let you be prospered and let it be your kamadhenu, ishta kamadhuk. Kamadhenu means a mythical cow which a wish-fulfilling cow which can give whatever you ask. So if you follow the cycle of yajna, if you follow the rhythm and harmony that is in nature, you will get everything. That means everything you need. Everything is needed. You will get if you just follow, if you just don't abuse what is given to you. And that was the instruction at the beginning according to Sri Krishna, that in the beginning, the Creator created and said to the human beings that you live your life in the spirit of yajna, in the spirit of sacrifice, in the spirit of taking care of the elements, forces of nature, in the spirit of giving back, in the spirit of offering, so that you may prosper. And if you follow, you will get everything you need. Then he says, Devan bhavayatane note deva bhavayantu vaha parasparam bhavayanta sriyo param avavsataha. You nourish the gods with this. Let those gods nourish you. Nourishing each another, you will shall attain the supreme good. So here, deva means the forces of nature, the nature itself. Take care of nature, nature will take care of you. Don't violate the ecological balance and you also will not be in trouble. Don't destroy the forests, you will get rain in time. In Bhagavatam too, we see that this idea that entire creation is just the limbs, parts of gods, is scattered all through the scriptures. In Bhagavatam it is said, Naddo so nadya atha tanuhu uhani mahiruha bisho tanoho nipendra. The trees are the hair of Lord. Rivers are the veins and arteries. So take care of the rivers, 
take care of the trees, this part, limbs and organs of the Virat, the cosmic God, Lord. So live in harmony with nature, which is called ecological harmony, and here it is being spoken of as Yajna. You take care of nature, nature will take care of yourself. So what, what we have received is Bhagavan's, Lord's gift to us. Now, what we do with the gifts is our gift to the Lord. Because there should be reciprocation of gifts. Lord has given us these gifts, how we handle these gifts and how we give it back. So, reciprocation of gift. gift. In Sanskrit, there are shubhashitas, means good sayings. So, one of the sayings is, Paropokarayo phalanti bhikshaha, Paropokarayo bahanti naddaha, Paropokarayo duhanti gabaha, Paropokarartham idam shariram. It means the bhiksha, the tree, produces the fruits for others. The rivers flows for the benefit of others. And the cows give milk for the benefit of others. Similarly, let my body be for the service of others. Let me utilize this body for the service of the world. Utilize this mind to give love to others and share my knowledge with others. Then it will become worship of the Lord. And I also will be going to get the greatest benefit. So that is why he says, Devan Bhavayato Aneno Te Deva Bhavayantu Yaha Parasparam Bhavayanta Sreyo Param Avavsataha. So you will get the highest good if you maintain this cycle, if you take care of the nature, take care of the elements of the nature, forces of the nature. You will get everything you need. Not only that, Param Sreyo, which is the highest good. We know that Indic tradition speaks of four types of drive or force type of goals one can have, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So here Sri Krishna is saying, if you take care of nature, if you don't violate the balance, ecological balance, you will get everything, dharma, artha, kama, and also moksha, because you are doing in the spirit of worship, which is karma yoga. And karma yoga, if we do our work, if we do our every activity with this spirit of offering to Lord, offering to the cosmic self, offering to the Virat, we'll get have purification of the mind and in a pure mind, a mind which is not contracted, which is expanded, the knowledge of the self dawns. That is the fundamental principle of Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. So you will get everything if you just propitiate the nature. If you do your work in the spirit of yajna, in the spirit of sacrifice. So this is another way of looking at karma yoga. Doing work as a worship of the Lord in the spirit of sacrifice. Taking part in this cosmic cycle. And now onwards, Sri Krishna will speak about how things, nature, forces, human beings, Rains, everything is interconnected. It is a worldwide wave of life. And how to take part in that so that your life become fulfilled. Your, you have spiritual growth through taking part in this interconnected way of life. That we shall see later on.
Next Sunday, June 30th, Sami Prapandananda Ji will deliver the Sunday lecture. And the topic is In Search of Friendship. This Wednesday, uh, June 26th, he will also continue giving his class on Uddhava Gita. Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. in this auditorium. And next Saturday, June 29th, there will be discourse on Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature. Presently, Sami Prapananda is giving did the discourse on Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. So all of you are welcome to attend these services. Om Madhubhata Rita Yate Madhuksharanti Sindhavaha Madhi Irna Santo Shadhi Madhunaktam Uto Sasi Madhumat Parthi Vagam Rajaha Madhudo Rastuna Pita Madhuman Yobanas Patir Madhumagam Astu Suryaha Madhir Gabo Bhavantunaha Om Shanti 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 <coughs> Sweet blow the winds and the oceans give forth blessedness. May the herbs and plants bring us health and happiness. Sweet unto us be nights and dawns. May every particle of Mother Earth be charged with blessings. May the heavens shower us with benediction. Sweet unto us be the novel forest trees. Sweet unto us be the shining sun. Sweet unto us be the all living creation, Om, sweetness, harmony, peace. This hymn was very much in keeping with the theme we have discussed today. So we have 10 minutes. I can take a few questions if you have. Yeah, there is a question. This yuga is a dark yuga, and things will happen. In the scriptures, it says things that don't <laughs> swallow. I didn't want you to laugh. Um, so they say things are going to happen bad in this yuga. And... So when you, we try to do the right thing, isn't it more natural in this yuga for these things to go awry? Okay, so you wanted to say that doing the right things is wrong? No, no, no. That's why I held on to the mic. I realize yeah. you. Um, no, I'm just saying do, you do the right things, but in this yuga, since it's a dark yuga, even though we try and we strive to do the right things, it's not necessarily going to turn out. Sure. So you meant, yeah. So you say this is Kali Yuga, the dark Yuga. Howsoever good we may do, things won't do, go well. That's what you said. Well, uh, that is, of course, a controversial thing to speak about, that everything is going bad. But... There are two aspects of the thing, why should we should do good things, or why we should take part in the process of yajna that we have been speaking. Because it is dark age, we should take part all the more, <laughs> right? Because uh, if we accept that it is dark age, Kali Yuga, that means most of the persons will not do good things. So those handful of people, like those who are here, for example. So we should do all the more way. All the more we should take participate in the yajna, process of yajna. So that that can counteract, right? 
So if you take the uh, question of global warming, so no one can solve the problem of global warming. No one nation, no one person. But there are people who are working to act against global warming and they are really trying, doing good things because they know the number is less and against those they are fighting, they are powerful, so they have to do more. Okay, this is one way of thinking about the outcome. Secondly, the real goal of Karma Yoga or real goal of doing work as yagya, as sacrifice, as offer, as worship is also our spiritual growth, right? The subjective counterpart. So we are interested also in our spiritual growth so that no matter whether it is Kali Yuga or Satya Yuga or whatever you say, if we do the work in the right spirit, as Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna, there will be subjective gain that will be our spiritual growth. Right? Yes, she is. Oh. Swamiji, you might have mentioned about the types of four goals. I think I missed it. Can you please repeat? Four types of goals. Okay, Purusharthas. Okay. And let me hear this question. Hard question. immense, immense population that is filling up this world of human population. It seems like a losing, losing battle. There is just so much pure garbage that we create that I don't think that we know how to dispose it of and just, just fling it everywhere in the uh, countries which will probably want to gain some money by it. And it's, it's, immensely, immensely uh, saddening phenomena. True, true it is, yeah. So we should do, take part in Yagya mode, <laughs> the Yagya of recycling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so there was a question, all, yeah, what are the four Purusharthas? So Vedic way of life said that there are four goals and human being should pursue or rather pursues. They are dharma, artha, kamo, and moksha. Artha means money or uh, the means to enjoy things. Kama means desires, fulfill your desires, several desires. Dharma means do them morally or righteously. So not only fulfill whatever desire you have, not only in, earn however way you want, but do them righteously. Do, don't be too selfish, follow the order, follow the righteous pattern, so that is dharma. And when these three are fulfilled, when all your desires almost you have fulfilled, then comes in the mind a longing to know what is my true nature? Or what is the meaning of life? Or is there an ultimate reality? Or questions like why there is so much suffering? So th when these types of questions arise in mind, we want to, uh, we want to, that is the beginning of, or dawn of spiritual life. And Vedas say that by leading a spiritual life, we ultimately come to know our true nature. That we are not limited human beings we are thinking, but we have a spiritual core which is infinite, which is complete. And if we know, one get to know that, we shall find that we are fulfilled. We don't require anything else to be happy, to be because we have a sense of incompleteness, that's why we seek things out. But when we know our true nature, to be infinite, to fulfill, to a source of bliss, then we would not seek things outside, that is moksha. Moksha means freedom from bondage. In the sense that when we are seeking things out,
when we are dependent on our happiness on things outside ourselves, we are in bondage because we are always depending on things, persons, events outside of ourselves. That is baddha, that is bandhana. And moksha means being free from those hankerings by knowing that we really don't require things outside to make ourselves happy. That is moksha. So in short, these are the four purusharthas or four goals of life. Okay, thank you.